Hello, this is Danielle Fowler, and I'll be talking to you today about the Distance Education Accrediting Commission and some of their standards that involve technology. So the Distance Education Accrediting Commission, also known as DEAC, was founded in 1926 under the name National Home Study Council. And um, that took me aback when I read it because I tend to forget that distance education has been around for a very long time in, in uh, form of correspondence courses. Um, and so it is a private nonprofit organization and it is a national accreditor for institutions that um, primarily offer distance education. And so the requirement for that means that they offer 51% or more of their programs online. And this accrediting body is recognized by the U.S. Department of Education, as well as CHIA, the Council for Higher Education Accreditation. And so accreditation by DEAC covers all distance education activities within an institution when, they're, when they are accrediting an institution. So their vision and mission are listed here. And um, so the DEAC is the preeminent accrediting organization for distance education delivered worldwide that sets high standards for academic quality, inspiring excellence in teaching, learning, and student outcomes through voluntary assessment and peer review. Their mission is assuring students high quality distance education through accreditation, peer review, and institutional improvement. So um, I spent quite a bit of time with their handbook, and um, this is not something I have ever done before, is uh, sort through an accrediting body's handbook. So this was quite a learning experience, and I found a lot of interesting information. I, one of the reasons I chose the DEAC for this particular project is because I assumed it would be chock full of all sorts of standards related to technology, and I was not wrong. Um, it is full of information about technology standards simply because of the nature of it being about distance education um, organizations or institutions. And so in the uh, handbook introdu introduction itself, um, it talks about how the DEAC accreditation standards establish education quality and expectations and assess an institution's ability to integrate technology to meet the needs of 21st century graduates and employers. So right out the gate, they're talking about how it's, it's really important for DEAC to look at an institution's ability to integrate technology um, for our, our ever evolving and changing um, society. It also talks about how the DEAC accreditation supports and encourages the innovation and use of technology by emphasizing continuous improvement processes to assure that institutions and graduates can compete in a global economy. So that, that phrase really um, tells me that this accrediting body is looking for um, innovation and progress and forward thinking um, innovations. In order to be um, even considered for this accreditation, they look at a few things. Um, a distance education institution is defined by the DEAC as an educational institution or organization whose primary purpose is providing education or training that does a lot of these things. But the two that I want to point out are number three and number five. Um, they are looking for education institutions that provide educationally sound and up-to-date curricula that are supported by quality instructional materials and appropriate technology. And then also number five is um, each program offered by the institution is predominantly distance education or correspondence education. So at least 51% or more um, have to be online for this accrediting body to consider you for eligibility. Then we get into the actual standards. So the introduction and the eligibility requirements all outline that this is this accrediting body is focused on um, on technology usage, whether it's online learning, whether it's um, using different technologies to support that online learning, 
Um, and so through the accreditation standards, there are several instances of technology um, that are mentioned. And so we'll go through a few of those. I've highlighted the ones that we'll talk about. The first I'll mention is within the institutional and effectiveness and institutional effectiveness and strategic planning standard. Um, there, there's quite a bit here because within strategic planning, obviously if you're an online institution, you need to be working quite a bit with technology. So it reads, the institution engages in strategic planning that aligns with and demonstrates a shared commitment to the mission. The institution's planning process involves all areas of the institution's operations, such as admissions, academic, technology, in identifying strategic initiatives and goals by evaluating external and internal trends for continued growth. At minimum, the strategic plan addresses finances, academics, technology, admissions, marketing, personnel, and sustainability. The strategic plan is reviewed and updated annually using established metrics designed to measure achievement of strategic planning activities. So um, again, it's, it's really important to the DEAC that um, strategic planning involve technology for obvious reasons. Within the third standard um, of program outcomes, curricula, and materials, there are a couple of mentions of technology. The first is about curriculum. So all curricula and instructional materials are appropriately designed and presented for distance education. Online materials sufficiently support the curriculum and are delivered using readily available, reliable technology. So that whole standard is about how um, the content should be accessible online, should be um, designed for online education, and should be um, accessible through um, e easy to access technology. Um, the next standard that I'll, uh, next um, portion of this standard has to do with academic honesty and um, it's it was really interesting because I noticed in this within this standard it talks about that institutions um, that are non-degree have that have non-degree programs um, are allowed to test students um, through secure technology and um, but degree programs it doesn't mention that so it mentions more that um, it requires proctors. Standard number four is educational and student support services. Services Within that standard, it talks about um, the ability for students, faculty, and other practitioners to be able to um, access the technology that they need and receive training on the technology they need. So the institution uses appropriate and readily accessible technology to optimize interaction between the institution and the learner that enhances instructional and educational services. Students, faculty, and involved practitioners receive training and support for the technology used to deliver the educational offerings. Moving on to standard number six about academic leadership and faculty qualifications. Um, it's, there's a portion there that states that faculty and instructors are carefully screened for appointment and are properly and continuously trained on institutional policies, learner needs, instructional approaches and techniques, as well as the use of instructional technology. So um, if you are going to be a heavily um, online institution, you've got to make sure that you are, um, to be accredited, you have to make sure that you are in, you are training your faculty and, and instructors to use the, the required time. And then lastly, one of the standards of, about financial disclosures, standard number nine, um, talks about the, the need to disclose to students um, what their fees are, including uh, technology access fees. All of this information was found on the Distance Education Accrediting Commission's website, deac.org, and um, it is a very nice website, easy to navigate. So if you are interested in learning more, I do recommend that you access the website and browse through. Thank you so much for your time.